All right, today we need to talk about properties of perpendicular lines. Just a few things we need to be aware of when dealing with perpendicular lines. Remember, perpendicular lines by definition are lines that intersect at right angles. The next question, of course, is what's a right angle? You may remember a right angle is an angle with a measure of 90 degrees. Therefore, we're talking about line pairs that intersect each other and form 90 degree angles. It's important to note that when two lines are perpendicular, that is, they form a 90 degree angle. And remember that we use this little square in the corner to say that it's 90 degrees. It's important to note that there are actually four 90 degree angles here. And the way that we can be certain about that is really by the linear pair postulate. I can see that these angles here form a linear pair. Therefore, their sum must be a 180. Since this one's 90, this one must also be 90. We have a linear pair here as well. So that's 90 degrees. And we have another linear pair here or here. So that's 90 degrees. Let me talk a little bit about the symbol again because it's important in geometry to be able to read the symbols and work in the context of those symbols and the information that's given to us, even if our eyes are trying to tell us something different. For instance, if I see something like this, my eyes tell me that is not a 90 degree angle right there. But I can make myself understand it's a 90 degree angle by putting the symbol in. And when I see that symbol, I have to conclude that that's 90 degrees because I've been told that it's 90 degrees. And once I know that that's 90 degrees, I know this one must also be 90 degrees. And this one as well, by the linear pair postulate, all the way around, all 90 degree angles. So remember that in a geometric diagram, if there's information given to you that is contrary to what your eyes are telling you, you have to go with the given information. Likewise, just because you, your eyes are telling you something about lines. For instance, here, your, your eyes may tell you, hey, those appear to be perpendicular lines. You're never justified in concluding that those are perpendicular lines unless you're given that amount of information. So we cannot conclude that this diagram contains any 90 degree angles, whereas this one, we have to conclude that it does because we've been told that it does. Please keep that in mind as you work through and look at different diagrams. It will be helpful. Okay, we need to just go over two theorems that we learn about perpendicular lines. They're pretty straightforward. Remember, a theorem is just a shortcut. The good news is, if you remember a theorem, you can get someplace more quickly than you would otherwise. Um, there's no real downside, though, because if you forget the theorem, you can just reconstruct it on the rules that you know, that is based, based on postulates or other definitions. So these theorems are just shortcuts. So the first theorem says... It says that if two lines are parallel and a third line is perpendicular to one of the lines, then the third line is also perpendicular to the other parallel line. Now, I want to just talk about the structure of this theorem for a moment um, because it's important to look at it and figure out what's going on here. I have an if-then statement. So we know that's a conditional statement. We know that the law of detachment applies to it. I also have the word and in here, which is actually quite important to us. It says, if two lines are parallel, and it'd be tempting to think that the two lines are parallel is the hypothesis, but the hypothesis continues. It says, and a third line is perpendicular to one of the lines. So you can see that we have what we might call a compound hypothesis. There are two parts to it. Now, this and joins those two parts. You may remember our study of truth tables. When we had an and, it meant that both conditions had to be true in order for the whole to be true. So there's a test here. When I ask the question, is this hypothesis true in a particular instance, it's not enough that I have two lines that are parallel. Neither is it enough that I have a third line that's perpendicular to one of the lines. I must have both pieces in place. I have to have two lines parallel and a third line that's perpendicular to one of the lines. Only when both of those conditions are met can I then go forward with the law of detachment and begin to conclude that this conclusion is true in that instance. Let's look at a quick example. 
Here I have two lines. We'll go ahead and stipulate that they're parallel. And I'm trying to create a situation in which the hypothesis is true here. So I need two parallel lines and a third line perpendicular to one of the lines. Now remember, just because I've drawn a line that looks perpendicular, that is not sufficient to conclude that it's perpendicular. I need that information in the diagram. There we go. Now I know I have two parallel lines and a third line perpendicular to one of those lines. The hypothesis of this theorem is true. What can I conclude? I can conclude that the third line is also perpendicular to the other parallel line. Notice I drew that in there. I put that in there as my conclusion, but it was not part of the original information given to me in the problem. That's one of the things you have to be very careful about as you work through geometry problems. So particularly if you're like me and you mark up the problem with your pencil as you go. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of what was given and what was concluded by you as you're working through the problem. The only danger in that is that if you make a mistake in one of your conclusions and you draw it into the diagram, for instance, if, I, if this had been a mistake, and then I use that information to answer another part of the question, I can get myself into some real difficulties there. So you have to sort of remember what was given and then what conclusions have you personally drawn as you begin to work through the problem. You'll notice that this theorem doesn't have a name. In our textbook, I believe it's called Theorem 3.1, and uh, that numbering system is completely arbitrary. It could be called something completely different in another book. I'm not going to give it a name. If you want to name it, that's fine. But for our purposes, just remember that it is a theorem. It's a shortcut. It works every time. Let's look at another theorem. This theorem says if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. Notice again it's in the form of a conditional statement, if, then, hypothesis, conclusion. If two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. Here we have a situation in which two lines are drawn on the board. They appear to be parallel, but we're not safe in concluding that. We're not justified in concluding they're parallel because we don't have that information. It's entirely possible that their slopes are just slightly different, and so if we were to follow the lines out to their out to some distant point, we may find that they in fact intersect, or perhaps diverge in the other direction. So we cannot conclude yet that these lines are parallel. Drawing a third line here. Also at this point we can't conclude that this line is perpendicular to either of these. But suppose I give you the following information. Suppose I tell you that this third line is in fact perpendicular to both of these lines. The theorem says if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, and they are parallel to each other. That's what we find here. We find that the hypothesis is true. And so therefore, we can conclude that these two lines are parallel. By the way, if you're wondering where the proof of these theorems comes from, it's a very straightforward application of the rules we've been learning in this chapter. If I have two congruent corresponding angles, then lines are parallel. That's the converse of the corresponding angles. Possible. I'd like to just look at one more example that is something you probably see every day in school, at least potentially, and that is a piece of notebook paper. Okay, here we go. I've got a piece of paper here. And one of the things you'll notice on lots of different pieces of notebook paper is that there are these blue lines that go across left and right horizontally on the page. And a lot of times you'll have this red margin line on the, on the side of the page as well. If I were able to establish the following facts, Suppose I could establish that all these blue lines are parallel. And let's further suppose that I measured an angle here between the red line and the top blue line. I would then be able to conclude that this red line is perpendicular to all of these blue lines, all the way up and down the page. On the other hand, suppose that all I knew was that the red line was perpendicular to each of these blue lines. But I didn't yet know whether the blue lines were parallel. Well, if I know the red line is perpendicular to all the blue lines, the second theorem allows me to conclude that all those blue lines must be parallel. Those are the properties of perpendicular lines that you need to be aware of. Please be careful. The properties only follow from given or known information, not from assumptions or guesses. So make sure the information that you're relying on to reach a conclusion is sound before you move forward.
As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email.